have a million things to do today. I've already got a couple of them done. I've ordered the groceries. Trying to expand on for him. I'm sure he's ready to come in. It's already hot. And I have changed the sheets on the bed. It's Monday. It's reset day around here. Hello, Mr. Sir. Yes, good morning. I know. Mom had things to do in the house before she came out here and fed you sillies. And I just added something to my list. I decided last night I was going to add something to my list this morning. So I'm filming. And I may regret it, but it needs to be done. It's hot. But you know what? It's not going to be any cooler. Any other day. This good morning, screamy pants. A little bit worried about my plan with these two, but we got to do it. We do, we do peach. Oh my goodness, big stretch. Big stretch, charming. Are you okay? Have you hurt your leg? Or are you just stretching? Just stretching, I think. Okay, let's get going. decision making but it's gonna pay off we've been in utah and arizona and new mexico i only meant to skip one video but we ended up skipping two because last week i was just so tired we were gone for like nine days it just took me some time to regroup all right come on friends we're all gonna eat down here this morning come on Totally recommend that trip out to Moab if you've never been. It's amazing, and if you if you can do it, it's really challenging to get out there, but it's pretty spectacular. One more game. We went our whole trip. We left here on a Friday. We drove to the west side of Oklahoma City just to kind of, because we left like Friday night, kind of get us a head start to Santa Fe. We drove to Santa Fe. We stayed a night, saw, th saw the things in Santa Fe. Then we went to the Grand Canyon the next day. Drove up to Flagstaff to the Grand Canyon. That was fantastic. Stayed a night on the south rim at Kachina Lodge which is like right there. Totally worth the money if you are there uh, and you don't have a ton of time. We only had one day to be in Grand Canyon, so we hiked one side of the South Rim to the visitor center that night, ate at El Tovar, which is pricey, but totally worth it if you want to splurge a little. Probably the best food we ate the entire trip. Then we got up the next day on Sunday and hiked the eight mile hike to Hermit's Rest. Fantastic, we're not huge hikers. It's a little worried. All the elevation change really is at the front of the hike, so it ended up being fine. Rode the bus back to Grand Canyon Village. We got up for like sunrise, we got up at like 5.30. And what we didn't know was 
you guys in Arizona don't observe the daylight savings time. So we actually gained two hours out there, which totally helped us because we were on central time. So getting up at like 5.15 was literally getting up the same time we get up every day at seven. Perfect. Saw the sunrise, hiked that, took us to like nine, showered, headed to Moab. Because I'm from the south, I've grown up in the southeast my entire life. We are considered, all of our states are rural states. Oh my gosh, no. You people in New Mexico, in Arizona, and Utah, it's rural. Like there are no people for hundreds of miles. It is very creepy and unsettling. We also saw Petrified National Forest in between Santa Fe and Grand Canyon. Totally worth the stop. We didn't really like spend a ton of time there, like two hours, but we saw the thing. Totally cool national park. We drove from Grand Canyon to Moab on Monday. That was our shortest drive, but oh my gosh. So ready for it to be done. And then spent a couple of days in Moab and I will tell you about that. But first, to do get something off the list today, which is gonna suck, but we're gonna do it. Okay, we're gonna try to get the big goats out of here and leave all the baby goats. I have every baby goat in here right now. So you can kind of guess what's coming. Coffee, 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 apple. Let's see, friends, if we can do this. Okay, I have nothing. I have nothing. Here we go. Watch out. We're just burning around. the hardest to get out. We're gonna wean the babies today, all of them. And I'm gonna talk, I'll talk about why once we get it done, but I really need to stop wasting time. Okay, so the camera over you, sorry. Nani knocked the cookies over, so half the babies and her got to eat like 50 cookies. Price to pay. So we're winning new babies today. Number one, Al and Dahlia are like six months old at this point. They really, Poppy really needs to wean them. And she kind of has started, but they're huge. They need to be weaned. Everybody else is 12 plus weeks. At this point, they're all, the rest of them are about the same age. Pixie and Zelda's babies, I have not sold any more. I need to repost them online again. Probably need to put them on Craigslist. Zelda, and we'll go see Zelda in a minute. She's still struggling with parasites. I just wormed her again yesterday and gave her copper. Her coat looks haggard. <laughs> She needed these babies off of her, and there's no reason to wean the three smallest ones, which I had tried to keep to get them a little bit more growth. If I was, I needed to re wean these huge four. I mean, if you look at Al and Charming, they are massive, beautiful bucklings. Dahlia I probably would have kept with Poppy forever if we ended up not selling her. Zelda's health is not great right now. It's not terrible, but it's not great. They need to be off of her so that she can dry off. So for now, yes, the girls and the boys are mixed and there's gonna be a lot of this to start with. The girls can't get pregnant at this age. They're not cycling. The risk is the boys breeding. The mama goats, uh, they're gonna be loud. They're gonna yell and scream. I typically wean in this pen, but there is not enough grass to sustain these four animals in this pen. And I'm not selling these guys quickly, so this may have to work for more than more time than I would like. We will yes keep the girls, the baby girls, in here until moms are dry. That shouldn't take more than two, three weeks since we're gonna go cold turkey. I am not gonna milk. I'm not gonna milk. We're gonna dry them up. Sorry, it's really hot and the camera keeps overheating. Yes, ma'am. Did mama take your babies? I'm sorry. Anyway, like I was saying, she's just not in great health. I think being eight years old, almost nine, triplets, 
it's just too much for her. She's just kind of on the edge and I'm kind of afraid if I leave her, they leave the babies with her that I'm not gonna be able to get her righted. But she's just gonna like steadily decline. Love her, that's not what's right for her. The babies are 12, 13 weeks old, it is time to go. I don't think it's gonna take a long time for her to dry off. If she dries up in two weeks, I will move the girls back <laughs> over here with her. This one is gonna take probably a month to dry off. So she'll be my one that it'll be tricky. I'm gonna just try to get them all sold. My guess is more than likely we'll be able to rehome, sell those two girls in snow, more than likely. Registered dolings will sell eventually because they're the dehorned, they can go to disputed, they can go to show. Somebody will buy them. Uh, Dahlia may be one that we end up keeping, and I think the bucklings will go eventually as well. People tend to look for inexpensive breeders. That is what we will do. So Dahlia we may end up with, we may end up with Bowser because he's so small. I'm hoping he can go as a companion with one of the other bucks. It will castrate him and he'll go as a weather. I think we may end up though with the two non-registered ones. I just don't know if we end up with all the boys. What will happen is once the girls dry off, so we're only waiting on three goats, Zelda, which I think will happen in a week or two. Her body is gonna say, I don't have to feed babies. I'm not making milk. I need to heal. That'll go fast. This one may take longer. She also, not great, but uh, better than Zelda. I think they'll dry off quickly. Poppy will take some time. That's okay with me. We'll put Dahlia back over here. Poppy is healthy. She wants to nurse her for six months. I'm not gonna worry about it. But we are gonna give them a two week at least break to get them dry or on the way to drying off. Then once the girls are out of this pen, we will put all the little bucklings, we will leave all the little bucklings in with the big bucks and the pigs. They're big. They won't need any separation. They'll have shared a fence, we less afraid. Little bucklings are pretty extra spicy. Pepper is biting my butt. You are, can you not? They're gonna cry, they're gonna scream, their mamas are gonna talk to them. The good sign is that mamas are ready. This mama is ready. This mama is ready. Poppy is my helicopter mom. She's gonna yell and she's also really loud. I never hear anything out of these two unless they're in heat. And I, I this one makes no noise even when she's in heat. She's not gonna yell back and forth. This one will a little bit, but not much. Uh, what's really funny is the first goats to yell back to them were Pepper and Parker. These are their buddies. Okay, maybe we can finish our video now that the cameras had an hour and a half to pull off. And I got the yard mode and it was too wet, but it's it's already 11 o'clock because it took me two hours to do it. Dolly lasted maybe 10 minutes and she escaped. So I had to bring a cinder block but in front of the gate to keep them in. They are kind of settling down and eating some things. I'm hoping they're gonna get brave and kind of get up in the shade. Yeah! The mom's ruining our life. But they're, they've quieted down for the most part. They're not screaming and yelling. They will tonight. Won't you, Peachy Queen? Y'all are hot. You need to go get in the shade. They will eventually. The mamas have been out and back in. They hate the lawnmower, so they tend to go out when I'm mowing the backyard and then come back in when I'm mowing around their fence. How are mama goats? Um, living their best life. That's how mama goats are. Yeah, let's mom take your sunglasses off. Cause they hurt her ears. Not fussed, not looking for them, not calling for them. Which tells you that they're, they're ready. Drying up nicely. Patty's almost completely dry. So, and Nani's babies have only been gone for like two and a half weeks. I just learned my lesson with Nugget last year that some of them just won't wean them. Hopefully we will be able to find new homes for them in the next few weeks because that would be best for them and best for us. If you know anybody in the Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas, Northeast Oklahoma, Southwest uh, Missouri, Southeast Kansas area, we're pretty accessible. We're within an hour of all those places. We'd be happy for you to pass on our information. We have four, mm, three registered bull dolings left, two registrable bucklings, and then two unregistered. That would probably do really great as pets. My mom is calling me. Now I have to go finish the rest of my to-do list, which is, I feel like these were the big things. The rest of our trip, we spent three days in Moab, Utah, which is where Arches National Park 
is and Canyonlands National Park and we did both national parks. We hiked to Delicate Arch which is like the big famous arch in Moab um, and Arches. It's what's like on all the pictures. It's a pretty tough hike. It's short. It's only like a mile and a half up but it is pretty much uphill the whole way up some slick rock. So for two like not super professional hikers it was a little bit tough and it's if you're afraid of heights it's a little wiggy but which i am but we did it we had so much fun definitely recommend getting out to moab if you can it's one of those that i feel like i knew i didn't know anything about and i have a childhood friend who lives in salt lake and she had been out there several times and it's just so beautiful it is very hot we got up like 5 30 every morning got out to hike by 6 15 and we're done by 10 to get out of the 100 degree heat there's no humidity so it feels a lot different and then we came back to denver we took the rocky mountaineer which is like a sightseeing train from moab to denver we stayed a night in glidwin springs it is definitely a pricey experience but i wouldn't recommend taking kids at all grown-ups only kind of thing like there were no children on this train we were definitely some of the youngest people it's a little bit pricey they go slowly so you can see all the sights uh it goes from moab to denver from Denver to Moab. Absolute fantastic experience. And then we stayed a night in Denver when Taylor Swift was there and we did not know Taylor Swift was going to be there and we couldn't figure out why hotels were so expensive. That was why. And I go back to work two weeks from today but I am working tomorrow, Friday, and probably two days next week as well. So technically I'm already kind of uh, part-time back. My OG over there. Gotta take care of him, big girl. Look how sleepy everybody is. But Doty. It does really make me reconsider breeding for next year because if I can't get rid of these guys, we're going to be overrun. I've got to get rid of at least a few of them uh, if we end up with one or two more does, so be it. But like, they got to go. I need all of them to go, but uh, we won't breed if we can't sell. Everybody would just live in, in their comfy retirement. <laughs>